Welcome back to Cancer Buzz TV. I'm your host, Summer Johnson. This show was developed as a resource from the Association of Community Cancer Centers for the cancer care professional. Today, we examine the critical role of the financial navigator on the multidisciplinary care team and a brand new resource to help financial advocates both new and experienced. Keeping up with the latest in oncology's ever-changing financial landscape requires a very specific know-how. There's a lot to keep track of, from payer policies to drug designations and financial assistance options. The ACCC Financial Advocacy Network is a community of more than 6,000 professionals, and the network provides numerous learning tools for those who provide financial advocacy services, including one of the only forms of training for the financial advocate, and that's called the ACCC Financial Advocacy Boot Camp. The Financial Advocacy Network Advisory Committee and Task Forces have developed a one-of-its-kind playbook, which provides a way to onboard and educate the staff who perform these services. Here today to tell us about it is Rifeta Kaidich. She's an oncology program manager at St. Luke's Cancer Institute in Boise. She's on the task force that developed the playbook. Hi, Rifeta. How are you? Hello, Summer. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. This is a quite exciting topic, so I'm super happy we get to discuss it. Rifeta, tell us about your role in financial advocacy. So I help support a mass variety of financial advocates ranging from pediatric oncology, radiation, medical oncology, through surgical oncology. So a lot of these advocates help not just cancer patients, but everything that kind of helps that um, everything they're going through. So we've seen a lot of different need lately, particularly all of this that's been happening with the COVID pandemic. Our cancer patients are not just dealing with their cancers themselves, but they also have other ailments. They might have psoriasis or arthritis. And we've seen a lot of different, like like you mentioned, the payer policies, things that are impacting not just oncology, but a lot of different medical diseases. So our advocates are there to really help find a way to ease this financial burden from all from our cancer patients that are just stuck having to figure out and navigate these fields of you know there's you know insurance is really hard to understand so deductibles out of pockets and they don't really know how to go about figuring out do they have to you know mortgage their home like what do they need to do to get their um, treatment taken care of. So I help support our patients in any way that we can from their cancer to whatever else they need to help them um, mitigate some of this financial burden that they're all experiencing. Financial advocacy is really complex, and that's an understatement. How do you stay up to date? Oh, that's tough. It, it's been it's really been tough because um, the advocates five years ago dealt with a lot of different things but the stuff that we're having to face and deal with now are so broad. There's so many more things that we didn't really anticipate. Um, there's a lot more stuff to keep up to date. So there's an introduction of biosimilars. A lot of different payers have set of care policies. There's pharmacy changes, white bagging, clear bagging, you know, so many different elements that the financial advocates have to really be on top of. And it's a really demanding role that it really needs a tool that can help them kind of go through this. How do you keep this job? How do you become good at this job? And how do you excel? And most importantly, how do you make sure that you have helped your patient from A to Z in all different aspects of their life that they're dealing with? So it's been it's been challenging, to say the least, to keep in touch with what is happening for every different payer specifically, because they don't all follow the same timeline. There's no, you know, on January 1st, everybody changes their policies. It's, you know, it can happen tomorrow. Every random day, something new comes out and their policies change that impact our patients that way. So there's 
a lot of education, there's a lot of researching, a lot of kind of digging through payer websites to try to find out what's happening on those policy changes. There's a lot of different things that are happening, like on the legislative front that we have to be on top of. There's the biosimilars, so many amazing new in like just a lot of different stuff that comes out for research and treatment options. So it's been challenging to say the least. What does financial advocacy training look like at St. Luke's? Well, um, initially we used to have kind of a learn as you go and learn from your other peers. So there wasn't truly, there weren't a lot of resources that were developed stuff was outdated just because um and it was to no one's fault it was just that we didn't have as big of a need back then when I had started that we do now so having gone through some of those trial and error issues we have helped develop different tools and resources and have a better leadership structure, a better support system for our advocates. We've implemented new roles, such as like a lead, having a program manager, having a people leader, and just really being able to focus. We do ask a lot of our advocates to help support the newer ones coming on board as well. We've created different, um, like a hub of different resources that they can tap into. We recently also started doing like a video library. So we've learned that a lot of our advocates are more visual so they really want to see why you're doing something and how you're doing it so we've done a lot of different kind of we're trying to be innovative in our training materials so that we can you know record my screen and I'm talk I can talk over and tell the advocate why they need to do something and why they're doing it and really trying to paint that big picture so we've come a long way but definitely um, we've got miles to go this is an ever-growing role and in a field that's constantly changing the demands are coming from every direction and you know it's all being done in the background of a pandemic so you've got all these different um, things that we also have to navigate on that front and coming up with new ways that we have to treat our patients. How do you connect with somebody that maybe is COVID positive and at home, but you as an advocate need a signature to get them drug assistance. So just trying to be innovative and tricky and trying to figure out a way that we can get to our patients without really compromising their immune system at the same time. How will you be using the playbook with your team? I'm super excited. Like the playbook has is been a long time coming. I think it's been something that has been necessary. As our group kind of got together, we realized that, hey, you know, this isn't just going to help our new hires. This is really going to help our seasoned veteran advocates that have been here for a while keep up on some of these things and what's nice about having a triple c kind of as the host of this is that we can update it as we go it's not going to be kind of final and then that's it so i'm really looking forward to having this come out this summer and handing it to our new hires seeing how they can actually help guide their own training as well like you some of this stuff in this role, you you do really need to step up in, but this will allow you to have a resource that you can kind of time yourself. So ready, set, go is what we decided on our theme to really kind of say, okay, you're not behind if you're not on page seven. You know, this is where you're currently at. You get to kind of monitor your own process and um, really help make this role successful for yourself as well. So I can't wait to get this into their hands. When you're speaking to a new advocate about their new role, what sort of advice do you give them? We always tell them, don't be so hard on yourself. This is a role that, gosh, really takes a lot of heart. It takes a lot of soul. It takes a lot of work, effort, sweat, and tears. Um, And you're not going to be an expert in day one. You're not going to be an expert in six months. It's going to take you at least a good year to feel comfortable in knowing at least the uh, the answer or at least knowing where you need to go to find the answer. So it will be, um, we always make sure that they know that they're valued, that this is a role that will ask 
so much from them and not everybody has gone to school to be a doctor but they might need to be able to speak to medical necessity and what does a biosimilar mean and how does it impact how do you you have to understand formularies on pharmacies and so many different things so this we want them to know that you know we're there to help them but there's only so much you know like we can do for them so they really have to just be confident in their abilities that mostly that a lot of people who gravitate towards these roles are people who really want to help people so always fall back on the fact that this is a rewarding job you really get to make a difference in our cancer patients lives and ultimately that's all that matters every other hurdle that comes our way we either have a way to figure it out or we'll find the solution some way but stay confident in your ability that you really matter to your patients is what we try to drive home for them the ready set go financial advocacy playbook is available right now for your staff who perform financial advocacy services you can find that and a robust suite of resources from the ACCC financial advocacy network on the ACCC website at accc-cancer.org backslash fan. That's F-A-N. If you're enjoying the information on this program, you might want to check out the Cancer Buzz audio podcast. You can listen for free to topics on the latest trends in cancer care while you're in your car, on the treadmill, or walking the dog. Just search for Cancer Buzz on your favorite podcast app. You can also ask Alexa to play the latest Cancer Buzz podcast. On behalf of all of us here at Cancer Buzz TV, thank you for watching today. I'm Summer Johnson. 